reduce when I can. And what does LCD do? Build things up. So I never want LCD for division or multiplication problem. And now we see that division problems are multiplication problems. So I don't need LCD for multiplication and division. Maybe. I only need like terms for addition and subtraction. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay. Is that all right? Anything else? Okay, we hit a couple things I wanted to talk about anyway, which is nice. Yes, we have notes from Mastel. I want to make sure we hit all the stuff in chapter one. Oh, that doesn't matter. Here we go. A um, couple properties to throw at you. I hate, I'm going to end up hating Fridays on Wednesdays because we've got 50 minutes and that's enough. Um, I already said these words before, but let's talk about what they each mean. Commutative property. Y'all want to become communists and make this commutative. There's no N in there. See that? It's commutative. Uh, and then the other one that goes along with this is associative. They both say the same thing. They both say you can multiply and add whatever order you want to. So let me give you an example. This is commutative property. This is associative property. Okay. <clears throat> now, does everybody agree that the answer is the same for all those things? Right? You guys with me? What will the answer be for all those things? Mm -hmm. No. Every one of those is not. Commutative, what moved from one side to the other? What moved? The individual numbers, individuals. What did you guys do this morning? You started somewhere and you commuted here. Individuals, there you go, Jeff. Individuals, I was going to put on. Individuals commute. What happened here? What moved? The parentheses got up and moved. Did you guys see that? Parentheses associate. Individuals commute. Parentheses associate. That's just a way to remember which property means which. Okay. So if I saw this, which property is that? Yeah, and we can be more precise now. That's commutative of multiplication. This is commutative of addition. Does it work for subtraction? No. Hell no, right? Because what's 4 minus 2? Two? 2. What's 2 minus 4? So subtraction and division are not commutative or associative. But addition and multiplication, all day. You guys all right? Does that sound familiar? Yes? Close to each other? How do you mean? Now watch, watch, watch. On the first one, did the parentheses themselves actually move? No. Just the stuff inside moved. Right? The two and the four switch places. So individuals commute. What happened on this line? The three, the four, and the two are all in the same relative place, right? Well, what actually got what actually happened? Parentheses said, I don't want to be, I want to be over here. And then well, parentheses, when parentheses move, associate. When individual things move, commute. Yes? Well no, I I I if I put a problem up here for commutative that doesn't have parentheses, then people say, oh, if there's parentheses, it's always associated, which obviously is not true. But what's, what's this? What property is this? Commutative, the multiplication. Right? I just want to give an example where I had parentheses and everything in there so you can see what really makes it one or the other. I like it. If there's no parentheses, it's kind of obviously not associated. I like it. Um, what about distributive property? That one's a relatively easy property, but again, do you guys know why it works? So if I have an example like 4 times x plus 2, 
You guys know how to work that. You gotta work with that. What happened? Yeah, why? Why are you allowed to do that? Is that order operations? What would order operations say? Yeah, do inside the parentheses. Add X into it. Do it. No. I don't know. X plus two. X plus two is W. So, on one level, you should be angry. You like you keep talking about freaking order operations, and then you're going to have me do something that totally goes against it. And that, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. But then I'm going to be like, no, not really. Because what does four times something actually mean? We did this. Four of them what? What's four times two? Why is it eight? Because it's four twos adding. So how can I write four times anything? I can write four of these things adding, because that is the definition of what that means. Oh, shit. <laughs> and since it's all addition, I can just take the parentheses out. I can use associativity and commutivity. What do I got? X plus X plus X plus X is, or X, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is, 8. So then somebody said, why do that shit? I'm going to have four of those and four of those. And we'll call it distributive because that's what it looks like it's doing. It's distributing the four. And everybody else is like, okay, sounds good. That is the true history. We need that. We need math drunk history. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, or something. Right. Nobody thought it was bad, so we all do it to this day. Okay. Um, I don't think they had any other freaky ass stuff. Oh, they do. Well, let's we'll see. Most time I got. Okay. I do want to talk about absolute value. But real quick, um, there's something called an identity. All right? This doesn't mean like you, it doesn't mean that awesome John Cusack movie identity. If you've never seen it, look up. So there's an identity movie, John Cusack. You guys know John Cusack? Jones right. So identity, there's an additive identity and a multiplicative identity. Let's see if this kind of makes sense. The identity should be the thing that keeps something the same. Doesn't change its meat, its purpose, its, its identity. Right? So what do I add to keep something the same? Zero. Zero. So zero is the additive identity. Because when I add eight to zero, I get eight. Ooh, it doesn't change its identity you with me. What is, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to ask if then the multiplication, the thing would be one. Good, yeah, the thing is one. Say it, just the multiplicative four. identity. Multiplicative. You guys never heard that word? So yeah. 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 Sure, I have multiplicative. I'm with you. Multiplicative. 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 Multiplicative identity. That's kind of really fun to say. Multiplicative. Especially if you're drunk. Again, math <laughs> Because yeah, 8 on. times 1 is 8. Stay with me now. Is that, that should seem like silly, but I don't know if you guys should associate the word identity with what those two numbers do. Yes, additive identity is always 0. Multiplicative identity is always 1. Kick ass. Yes. So what would you use the identities for? Okay. They, also, they then can be built into the idea of inverse. What do you think when I say inverse? Yeah. Opposite. So, additive inverse would be the thing I would add to bring something back to the identity, effectively killing it. And of course, what do I add to eight? Negative. Negative eight. So that's the additive inverse is the opposite sign. What's the additive inverse of negative seven? Seven. 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 Because together they add to be zero. I like it. What about multiplicative inverse? I, what do I multiply 8 by to make it become 1? Multiplicative identity. 1 8. So when I say opposite, that's not fair. Because there's two ways to think of opposite. Change the sign or flip it. So that's why there's an additive opposite, additive inverse, and a multiplicative opposite inverse. Is there, a, for identity, is it the same as true? If, is there a subtractive and a divigative? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to be honest, zero would also be the subtractive uh, 
identity, right? Because you subtract zero from anything, you still get the thing. You with me? But uh, since they had, don't have those other properties, and we like to build these all together, that's why they're kind of left off the list. They don't have commutative and associate. Okay, okay. So last thing I want to talk about today. Um, I wanted to get into equations, but not on a 50-minute day show. Uh, absolute value. All right. An absolute unit. Absolute value. What's that mean, absolute value? It's the difference between zero. Beautiful. So the absolute value, did I already talk about this a little bit? No, mm -hmm. no. Think about somebody. Um, you're all like, you're cheating on us? Yes. Um, so the absolute value, for example, of three is? Three. Three, because it's three steps away from zero. How many steps away from zero is negative three? Three. three. Still three. So if somebody said to me, I'm negative four feet away from you, I'm like, are you, are you in me? <laughs> there you go. Um, so absolute value is the most single-minded function. It makes whatever's in it come out positive. If it's positive, it leaves it alone. If it's negative, it changes its sign. So let me freak you guys out. What's that? No. What if x is negative 8? That's the absolute value. Totally. So what's the answer? Can't be both. The answer is one thing. Right. Did they get two answers over there? No. I got one answer. So here's the evil thing. What did I just say that it does? What did the absolute value do to three? What did it do? Nothing. Did nothing. What did it do to negative three? It changed its sign. How do you change something's sign? You make it born early. No, not. <laughs> How do you change negative three? How do you, what do you do to it to make it become positive? Multiply by negative. Stay with me, come on now. So if the thing on the inside, if, you ready? The answer is two parts. It will be x if x is at least 0. Because when does it leave it alone? If it's already positive or 0. What if x is negative? What's it got to do to it? Yes. And people don't believe because they look at it and say, that's not positive, Jeff. Well, sure it is. If x is negative times negative, freaking positive. So what's the absolute value of negative 11 using this? rule. The inside is less than zero, so it's the opposite of what it is, 11. So the reason the rule it looks weird is because the absolute value doesn't have one thing it does. It's got two things it does. And that's why personally, well, I don't want to know if that My true opinion is we shouldn't even use the absolute value. But it does have purposes in higher math, so what the shit. We will still do the absolute values and equations. Yeah. I think that was the last thing I wanted to do before I got into equations. Um, yeah, shit. I have no time. Any questions on that last thing we did? Absolute value. I think that pretty much kill, kills chapter one. So let's have a quiz on chapter one on Monday. You want a Tuesday instead? Yeah. 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 I'll make it a little bit longer now. Okay. We have more time on Tuesday. That's what you want. You didn't fully disclose you didn't ask questions. Alright guys. So quiz Tuesday on chapter one. Just chapter one. Yep. Probably the next day after that, we'll have a chapter two, parts of chapter two. Oh, yeah, dude. We'll talk about that on Monday.